again, my little yarnivores and spiderettes. Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. And today I have got a lovely, very, very simple shawl for you. Yes, this is the Modern Granny Shawl. Yes. Now I have seen this in blanket form. However, I personally have not seen it in a shawl form. So I thought, well, yeah, let's go for it. Yeah. Um, very, very simple. It's just a two row repeat. And for those of you that don't like the, the look of the grannies having the holes in there, well, no worries. No, no big alternate gaping holes because all of the clusters are aligned with each other. Yes. So for those of you that don't like the, the styling of the original granny, well, this might be more your style. Now, for this particular piece, I used Lion Brand's Ice Cream Big Scoops in the colorway of Butter Pecan, and I've used this a bunch um, in other tutorials and so forth. Absolutely love this yarn. Thank you very much, Lion Brand, for sending me this. And it is 10 ounces, 1,117 yards, and it is acrylic and a weight of three. Now, the recommended hook size is a size H or a five millimeter hook. Me, well, I break rules left, right, and center. And so I used a size J, six, six millimeter hook, because I want my pieces to be very drapey and flowy. That's just my personal thing. That and I have a tendency of using the death grip when I do my stitching. But this came out really nice and I love it so. And uh, what else? What else am I missing here? Um, no, I think that's it. Now, um, as far as that one skein that I used for this, this is how much I had left over. And I was afraid that I wasn't going to have enough to do another couple of rows, so I just left off here. So if that gives you some sort of indication as to about how much yarn you might need for a substantial sized shawl. Say that five times fast. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. All right, I usually do timestamps with my tutorials. However, with this one, there's really no need because it's just literally a two row repeat. So we're gonna start with our slip knot and then a chaining up of five. One, two, three, four, and five. And now, of course, you could have, you know, you could do the, the magic loop method. You could do, you know, the chaining of four and slip stitch to the first chain to create a ring. This is, of course, my personal, you know, preferred method. You know, this is just what I do. Now, the first chain is going to act as our ring, and the additional four chains is going to act as a double crochet and chain one space. So from here into this first chain, three double crochets, like so. And yes, this is very similar to your typical granny, except in the corners, after you're doing your clusters, just chain one not your usual two or three, just, just one. And then into that same first chain, three more doubles. Chain one and one more double. And then of course you can cinch up your tail, sew it in later and you're all good. All right, so that is the first row. All right, so for row two, going to chain up one, turn the work, and then into this chain one space, going directly in with a single crochet, chain three, and another single crochet into that same space. because we need a little, little ring at the end there. Then chain three, one, two, three, 
and then into the chain one space in the spine, single crochet, chain three, and into the same space, single crochet. Okay, chain three, one, two, three, and then into the end here, that end chain one space, single crochet, chain three, and single crochet. And that is our second row. Alrighty, so for our third row, chain up one, turn the work, and into the chain three space, I like to do a slip stitch, get in there, and then chain up four, one, two, three, four, and into the same chain three space, three doubles, There we go. And then into this chain three space here, three doubles. Now do not chain in between this cluster and where we're going to be doing our next three doubles. Just go right in with three doubles. There we are. And the single crochet that we have right here, it does separate things, so you don't really need to have that chain one space in there. All right, so then from here, we have our center spine. Well, into this chain three space, we need to extend things by doing three doubles. Three. And then chain one, just like we did down here and then three more doubles. There we are. And then into the chain three space, three doubles. And then into the chain space that we have here, three doubles. Chain one and one more double. Okay. So you can see the, the pattern starting to develop. I'm gonna do probably a couple more rows just to make sure that you guys understand the gist. But I mean, that's really all there is to it. Just cluster, loops, cluster, next one's going to be a loops, cluster, loops, cluster, loops, back and forth, back and forth. It's really that easy. And uh, this pattern actually lends itself to a variegated yarn that changes color fairly quickly. Most patterns, if you use a quick change variegated colorway, it tends to look muddy, but in this case, I think it looks better. Um, and, you know, throughout the next couple of rows, you'll see what I mean. So let's keep going, shall we? Okay, so the next row needs to be a loop row. So chain up one, turn the work into the chain one space, single crochet, chain three, and another single crochet, then chain three, and then single crochet into, it's not a chain space, but into the space in between your clusters. So single crochet, chain three, same deal, single crochet in between the clusters, chain three, and then into the center spine, going to single crochet, chain three, and single crochet into that same space. And then down the other side, chain three, 
single crochet in between, chain three, excuse me, chain three, and then single crochet in between, chain three, and then into the last chain one space, single crochet, chain three, and single crochet. All right, and then to do the next row, I'm going to chain one, turn the work into the chain three space, slip stitch, chain four, one, two, three, four, into the same space, three doubles, Three doubles into the next chain three space. Three doubles into the next. Three doubles into the next. and then into the center spine, into this chain three space, three doubles, chain one, three doubles. Okay, so three doubles, chain one, three doubles, pull out some more yarn as needs be, into the next chain three space, three doubles. Three doubles into the next space. Three doubles into the next. And then into the last chain three space, three doubles, chain one, one double. Three doubles, chain one, one double. Okay. All right, so as you can see that with the, the way that the yarn does change color, it creates a really interesting look. Now, of course, what you could conceivably do is every other row, you could change the color of your yarn. That would be a lot of ends to sew in. Oh yes, it would. Um, or you could probably figure out a way to, you know, uh, draw up your, your loops, um, you know, your, your ends of your yarn. However, because it's every other row. It's not like you're going from, you know, from here to here and then back again so that you have your, your same yarn. It's every other row is a different, different stitch. So it wouldn't quite work out that way, but that's why I like the yarns that change color. Now I'm just going to do one more row. Um, you could leave your project with this edge, or you could leave it with the chain edge. Either way, you know, it's fine. So I'm going to chain up one, turn the work, and then into the chain one space, single crochet, chain three, and then into that same space, single crochet, and then chain three, single crochet into the next space in between the, the clusters there chain three, single crochet in between, chain three, single crochet, chain three, single crochet, chain three, single crochet, chain three, single crochet into the same space, chain three, 
single crochet it's like a little song chain three and a single chain three another single chain three single chain three and into that last chain one space single crochet chain three and single crochet there you go and then of course going on to the next row you would chain up one turn the work slip stitch into the chain three space then chain up four three more doubles into that same space and then three doubles three doubles three doubles three doubles three doubles three doubles chain one three doubles and so on and so forth it's really that easy i love how this looks and how it came out yes indeed i do and if you like this tutorial don't hesitate to give a little thumbs up button down below you guys know i appreciate your appreciation so please do also, do hit subscribe because I do try to post often, whether it's crocheting or knitting or audiobook narrations, or also please do visit my other YouTube channel, Fiber Spider Games, where I do video game playthrough and commentary. Link in the description box down below. And until next time, I want all of you, yep, yes, you, yes, yes, you, <laughs> to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, and above all, stay stitching and safe. Love you guys, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.